Jesus, why don't you <clears throat> drink some water? Clear out your throat before you start speaking to us. Like, wake up, collect your thoughts. Sounds gross. We don't like eating it. Chew with your mouth closed. We want to hear what you're eating. Mediterranean sea salt crackers. Delicious. Would you put on it like some jam or some cheese, some peanut butter, almond butter? Nothing. Nothing. <clears throat> I don't know what the percentage is, but there is a few people here that are degenerate gamblers. I mean, if you guys have heard my pitch, my spiel, you guys know that I, I think all addictions are gambling addiction because if you have uh, exhibit any behavior that you can't control and you can't stop, that's gambling. You drink, you get in a car, that's gambling. Um, anyways, I'm, this, isn't, this isn't about that. And so I know... I don't know what the number is, but there's a few of you out there that are listening to this right now. Well, a lot of the current NFT digital space does feel like a casino because it is a casino. I've been in, a, I've lived in casinos. I know what that's like. I know I, you take the walls away in the, you know, Macau, Vegas, the, all the, the architecture and the structures. It's, it's a casino. You know, digital horse racing, you know, buying and selling, looking at your phone every two seconds. That's that's gambling. And so I've made <clears throat> and lost and made and lost and thankfully kept um, small and large fortunes. And um, yeah, I have no doubt it's not my purpose in this world. I don't think it is to give gambling advice. I could. I could sit here and give super, um, my, my old teacher and mentor, Baron Story, one of the greatest artists in the world, um, said this to me once. He, he said, uh, wow, David, you're very confident in like the advice you give, you know, and, and I hadn't done anything yet. I was in my twenties, still like right about to drop out of art school. Um, and then I did, and I kept in touch with Baron and he said this, this, um, advice you're giving to young artists and young creatives and young hopeful uh burgeoning artists is very dangerous advice I go, why why is that baron he goes because most people aren't like you they don't have your confidence they don't like and so this advice in the wrong hands is not going to help them it's going to actually hurt them and so i look at my gambling you know my gambling advice is absolute recklessness you have to have balls of steel. You have, you need to have a structure. You have to have a plan around it. And most people don't have that kind of discipline. You know, most people don't have the discipline to be a professional athlete, a professional artist, a, prof a professional anything, right? So the way I gamble, you know, so if anyone's here listening going, oh, I hope Dave Cho tells gambling stories and gives advice on gambling. Yes, I could do that. But it will be more destructive for myself and to you than helpful. And with that being said, you know, I often watch and try to read into my dreams and daydreams, especially the daydreams, like I'm watching television, make some edits here, change the music. Uh, so the last night I, uh, or yesterday, not last night, I daydreamed about snowmen and immediately I had euphoric recall, you know, a lot of the casinos that I gambled in, um, you know, not to make it about race, <laughs> Asians love to gamble. They love to gamble in a way that would make any other race. I mean, uh, your head spin, I mean, just millions and millions of dollars without flinching. And so I've gambled a lot in China and there's a lot of casinos that cater to Chinese people here in America. And so I'll be at a table with high rollers, billionaires, and they'll be screaming in Chinese. And through the whole night, the only three words you would ever recognize is snowman, monkey, or barbecue. Barbecue is char shu. Like it's, uh, you know, and the, my game of choice was baccarat. 
which, you know, blackjack, the point is to get 21 or close to 21, and Baccarat, it's 9. The difference is there, it's the cards are going to come out the way they're going to come out. It's all superstition. There's no... I'm not going to get into it. It's just the point is to get 9, and then sometimes uh, when a 6 and a 7 come out... Um, I should know this. It's been a while since I talked about it. Um, it sounds like barbecue, whatever the word for barbecue is in Chinese. So they scream out, barbecue, um, barbecue, barbecue. Uh, monkey is they want a 10 or face card. Like when they don't want a small number. And so they start screaming monkey, you know, Ch- these are Chinese people, well-dressed, lots of money. Don't speak a word of English, screaming monkey. And you can imagine what that looks like. You know, millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Even in blackjack, if you need a 10, they'll, they'll yell out monkey. And the last one, snowman. I mean, you can figure it out. Is the figure eight. Is when, uh, you know, the dealer is showing a six, a seven. And they just want that eight. Monkey, monkey. Or sorry, uh, snowman, snowman. Uh, so a lot of Chinese gamblers who don't speak English, that's the only three words they know. Snowman, monkey, barbecue. I bring this up last night because I'm tired. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's just I have my list of things I need to catch up on. On shows, on weird European shows, Asian shows. What, what do you mean shows? I'm just like... It's too much. Well, that's when you stop. That's when you stop. That's when you age. That's when you start getting old, when you start sounding like that guy. Oh, I like my my own shows, my own programs, my old music. I don't like all this new stuff. It feels like everything on Netflix is coming out of an algorithm. It feels like it's made by a robot. I can't keep up. It's just too much. Oh, you like that movie? Did you know that it's a remake of an Asian movie from Korea? Oh, so I gotta watch the Korean one too now? Oh, the, oh you know that show that, um, that, that you loved? They remade it in Brazil, and it's like a thousand times crazier. So I gotta watch that now? Where, where does it end? It, it's like uh, you're getting hit with the hose. It's, it's, you'll never... Unless you... It's like I'm being lobotomized and mind controlled. Oh, God, this again. You'll never be able to catch up. There's too many shows. There's too many. It's easy. It's easy to make a TV show now compared to what it was like in the 80s, 90s, you know, whatever. Anyone can do it. You can take your iPhone, get editing software, and you can make a show. You can have a huge. uh... So what's this all about? We're, we're, you're all over the place this morning. Can you collect your thoughts a little bit? No. In my daydream, I saw 888. Aesthetically, it was pleasing to me. These curvy snowmen. 888. What does that mean? Well, it could mean a lot of different things. It has a lot of superstitious stuff. Put it sideways, it could be three stacked infinity signs. I mean... But what it meant to me the way I interpreted it and the way I'll translate it for you is for the next eight months. Not a year, eight months? Yeah, starting today. Well, actually, in eight days. Starting in eight days from now. And I'll update you guys with where I'm at. Well, tell us what it is first. Okay. Eight, eight, eight. Eight movies or TV shows. Uh, eight books and eight uh, albums. And look, you can start nitpicking and go and and try to bend the rules. And I'm not going to tell you. This is for you. Because you and I will never be able to watch, read, uh, ingest, consume everything that's out there. You know, in the same way the pandemic brought focus to, to a lot of people's lives and, and, and awoken a spirit in a lot of people that was dormant or dead. I want you to make a list of eight books, eight albums of music, and eight 
uh, TV shows or, or movies, not separately. You, and what is this? This is to add some level of discipline, some clarity, some focus. So for the next eight months, for you to make a commitment to this community and to yourself that you will not listen. I mean, and look, wait, are you talking about like a, a specific episode of Breaking Bad or the f- whole season? That's up to you to clarify. I'm not going to do that for you. Less is more. Your life is more, and, and this is freedom, right? Like in the same way when I was in jail in Japan and I was limited to what I could read because there's not that many books written in English, I got a lot of uh, joy and information and entertainment out of the books that were in English and there weren't that many. That was, uh, I had no choice. So having choice take, so you're saying having choice taken away from you, you found freedom? Exactamundo. So pick eight albums of uh, music, or maybe just the songs. Maybe you don't want to hear the whole album. Um, maybe it could be stuff from the past, you know? So I'm open to recommendations. I'm trying, my goal is to try to stay away from darkness you know, I know sometimes the only way through things or to get over things is to go through them. So I can immerse myself in darkness, but uh, uh, let us let me try to figure it out right now. Uh, I guess I should have sat down and collected my thoughts a little bit. I'm currently reading Autobiography of a Yogi. I'm finding it. It was a, it was a recommendation by Andrew Santino on the set of Beef, a TV show I acted in. And I'm finding it, um, I'm finding it kind of difficult to, to get through it, but that, I think that should be one. I don't think they should all be like super exciting. The books could also be comic books. If there's any, you know, I've, uh, Hodorowsky, Alejandro Hodorowsky's The Ink Call, I've read those out of order. It's been years. Maybe I'll just sit down and read those again. Um... For movies, there's a movie that I've talked about here before that's very, uh, I've talked about on Twitter spaces. It's called Magicians, not The Magicians. It has a two star rating on Yelp or IMDb or, you know, Ron, one, it's not rated very highly. And um, uh, I remember Alan Arkin is in it and Claire Forlani, who kind of disappeared from uh, from movies, I think. But I just, um, let me look it up right now. <laughs> Not that many results show up. Um, and there's a lot, so many movies and TV shows called Magicians that this one gets lost. This one's from the year 2000 and the director is James Merendino. I don't know what else he made, but there was something just impactful about this movie to me. It's like two bros, magicians on the road against impossible odds and... I remember feeling really good. So maybe I'll watch that one again. It's to focus. It's so that you like you won't be up to date with the latest season of this and that. You just pick eight shows that you want to watch. And when I say shows, it's TV shows or movies. Um, you know, I the greatest TV show, you know, uh, if I've never talked about... Um, Nathan for you, Nathan Fielder is a genius. He's one of my favorite artists. And uh, for me to make a cameo in Simon Hanselman's uh, Crisis Zone comic book during the pandemic was like one of it. I squealed like a little girl. And then to appear in Simon Hanselman's comic with Nathan Fielder was like, and I, you know, I don't know if he knew that I liked him or whatever. And I, and I, and I did actually get to meet. Uh, I know I sound like a douchebag right now, but it's okay. I am sometimes. Uh, I did get to meet Nathan Fielder at um, Jimmy Kimmel's house once, and it was uh, for a party, and it was like I was that guy. I was like, oh, and then and then when you did this and Nathan for you, so Nathan for you, one of the you know classic greatest shows ever on television. Um, the his new show, the rehearsal. You know what it feels like? It feels like. Um, he has more money and budget and like it just feels like higher budget and higher production values and yet i 
and it's great, and I shouldn't say, because I haven't watched the whole thing yet, but I just, in the same way people come up to me and go, hey, I loved, um, you know, the Cho Show, and I love it when you're on your, you know, Bourdain or or um, David Chang's cooking shows, you know, but I just loved Thumbs Up. I just loved you and your buddy Harry and a camera guy. That was bare bones. It was just, there was, that, that was actual reality TV. It was real. All this other stuff, there's so much editing and writing and special effects and, you know, not that, you know, anyways. They go, we love that and, you know, all your podcasts, Joe Rogan, Howard Stern, cool, but we loved KGB. You and your buddy Harry and Joey just, you know, talking like no one's listening. Um, and then that's valid. That's a valid point. So, um, that being said, this is all to say, I don't know how it's still on Netflix. I don't know what country you live in or where you're listening to this from, but there's a show on TV called Hyper Hardboiled Gourmet Report. And I could be wrong, but it's something with hardcore gourmet report. I'm pretty sure that's it. And it's from a few years ago, and there's only five episodes. And I would consider this one, like one show. I've watched this show five, six times. I've recommended it to, like, my family, my friends, uh, Spike Jones. I told him to watch it. Every actor. Um, Hyper Hardboiled Gourmet Report is one of the greatest TV shows I've ever seen in my life. It's has the spirit of thumbs up, it's so, these guys are so aggro, it's just a Japanese film crew, just going, like, yeah, all the cooking and food travel vlog shows, these guys go into a graveyard with child soldiers, and like, they go into crypts and bloods territory, and all of it, they do all this crazy shit to find out what they eat for lunch, and it's, it's one of the most insane coolest funniest shows i've ever seen uh and i watch that that's definitely in one of my things um i really really enjoyed the Watchmen uh tv show on hbo uh, i'm watching these documentaries uh truffle hunters it's a foreign film documentary and finders keepers about a fake leg uh by the creators of king of the king of kong uh, I haven't finished watch. I don't know. I'm all over the place. I'm going to sit down with a pencil and paper. Uh, everyone's telling me I haven't had a chance yet because, once again, uh, I've heard bits and pieces here, but I've heard everyone say the new Kendrick album is off the chain, off the hook, amazing. I love Kendrick Lamar. So maybe that'll be one of those things. I always, my easy fallback for music is always um, Explosions in the Sky. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to comfort things, nostalgic things, Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction. But I don't know if those things are true to me. I would like to... This is what I would love to do. I would like to talk to my friends, get recommendations, talk to you guys, get recommendations. And I'd like to stay away from darkness. I'd like to read, listen, and watch movies, TV shows, and books. And at the end of it, feel i don't know if I don't, enlightened is overrated i'd rather i want to feel inspired joyful happy there's so many shows where i finish watching and and it's like that's what i wanted i don't like myself and i hate myself so i wanted to feel that way at the end and i felt oh god we're such a part of a horrible human race i'm i'm not in that season i hope i'm never in that it could happen again of course but I'm not there right now, so I don't want to stay there. I would like to read things that make me think hard and deep and feel, feel more than think and inspire. And um, I'm reading this book right now called Anastasia. <laughs> uh, I mean, this thing is more crazier than any sci-fi fiction. Uh, you guys, you got to check it out. Just... Um, Google Anastasia. I, I, I don't remember the author's name. It was written in like the 90s, like mid 90s. Uh, I'm not going to go so far as to say life changing because I just started reading it. I'm on chapter four right now. But it is 
Anastasia and the Singing Cedars. It was recommended to me by Supernatural Forces. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But yeah, I'm all over the place this morning. So I'm going to refine everything. You know, I'm just talking out loud right now. I'm going to... Um, YA, what is that? Uh, young Adult. I love YA sci-fi novels. But I'm not looking for dark. I'm not looking for the next Breaking Bad or Sopranos. I'm not looking for a hard-boiled crime. Like, I've read all those things. You know? I'm looking for books that are going to make me feel amazing, where I learn something about myself, about life, about people, and I feel inspired at the end, hopeful. Um, that's my intention. And who knows, in eight days, I might pick all super dark, gritty, grim, you know, darkness, shadowy books. But... Um, you know, I have a lot of that stuff in my library, you know, and I'm just getting getting rid of it. Maybe I'll give it to you guys. I don't know, that feels weird. <laughs> like, I, f I found a box, an old box, filled to the brim. And when I say box, I mean it's a giant box. You can't lift it. You need two guys to lift it. Filled with uh, porno comics from every country, from South America, from from Europe, from Japan, you know. And I don't, you know... I don't ever open this box. It's covered in dust. It's just one of those things I got in my paranoia that if one day the internet goes down and I'm single and I'm isolated and I just need to... And so I just carry this box with me. To, and it, like I'm like, wow, I know some of my fans or friends would even love this, but do I want to spread that poison? I don't know. Maybe I'll just dump it or burn it. Let it go. Let it go. Uh, 888... In eight days, you pick eight books or comics, graphic novels, novels, whatever, fiction, nonfiction, whatever, any kind of books. You pick eight albums from eight artists or maybe eight different albums from one artist. I don't know. And eight movies or TV shows. And this is your natural fallback go-to well, I'm in the film industry, Dave. I I have to watch dailies of a uh, pilot. I don't I don't care. Just pick. This is I'm. This is a thing that came to me in a vision, so I'm explaining. And it might be stupid. It's just for myself, and I'm sharing it with you. And things, like we know, are better in a community if we do these things together. So I don't care if it's a hundred of you, the thousand of you, or just one of you. Um, let's do this, and let's see what happens. Let's. I don't know. It might, you know, I'm, oh God, I'm FOMO. I'm missing out on all this new music. And, or we might go deeper into books that we've already read or books we've never read. We might go deeper, hear things in songs that we've never heard before. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. And that's exciting to me. 888. Snowman, snowman, snowman. Are they melting? Doesn't mean.